Hello, welcome. If you are new, welcome back. If you're returning to this channel, I'm Dr. Kelly Ritter. I'm a nutritional therapist and quantum health coach specializing in mental health nutrition. Specifically, I help with natural anxiety relief. And I'm going to talk about in this video, my personal experience transitioning from a carnivore diet to my pro healing diet. So check it out. Okay, let's talk about uh, this transition. So I, if you are new here and you haven't um, ever heard me talk about it, I utilized a carnivore way of eating for two and a half years. And my goal always has been to be able to implement, um, not implement, to just tolerate some plant foods. So really for me, it's more about um, entertainment and just some diversity. I want to be able to eat things and not have big reactions. So for me, I was really doing it for my health because I was already eating a whole foods, healthy diet. I'm a nutritional therapist. So I felt like I was doing that pretty well. And I was already, you know, gluten-free because I've, I had a thyroid issue. And so I figured that piece out. I was a non-drinker, non-smoker. Like I should feel amazing is what I thought. And I really just didn't. Um, I felt pretty good and I'd certainly had a lot of improvement. I really focused on gut healing for many years and that was helpful. I, I, you know, it was helpful. Um, I was also a, um, psychotherapist before, so, and a professor in counseling. So I've done tons of work in my own therapy and in trauma, um, you know, clearing up old trauma, all of that. And all of that was helpful. So I felt like I should feel amazing and I did not. So I started and I went straight from like a whole foods, almost paleo. I still had some dairy and occasionally I would have some non-gluten grains, but mostly I was, you know, paleo ish whole foods. And I went straight from that to carnivore. So I, um, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I, I had a rash all over my legs. We had just come back from vacation. And I was like, I am tired of feeling like this. I'm going to try this, this carnivore thing out. I did some research and I felt pretty comfortable with it. But the truth is, is there not, there, especially then, there was not a ton of research supporting this way of eating. So it was really just, it resonated with me. And I'm the type of person, I'm not going to wait for science to catch up in order to benefit you know, I want my health. So I don't wait for science to catch up. I also am very, I love science. I love to look at the, at the science and look at the information on clinical trials. I'm a qualitative researcher. That's what I did for a long time. So it's not that I don't love research, but I have, I just know that it's particularly in nutrition, really good research is hard to come by in nutrition. And I, when something's really healing, it takes like 20 years for the science to catch up. So anyway, I digress. But I decided I'm just going to try this for um, 30 days. I was going to do a month and see. And it took me a little while to even like get fully carnivore. It took probably a couple of months or so before I quit with my dips <laughs> and things like that. And I loved the way I was feeling so much better. I was finally having days where I felt amazing and I thought, okay, I'm going to keep going. So carnivore didn't solve everything. I was still doing some, and I'm using, um, I'm working with a classical homeop homeopathy practitioner to clear up because I was still having some headaches. So it's not going to cure everything, but it certainly made a huge difference in my health. And I started feeling really great and I wasn't like, you know, super overweight, but my weight, um, I got to where I was back in a bikini again. I never thought that I would ever be out of a bikini. And then I was, I never dreamed that I would be, um, overweight because I was really tiny growing up. And then, um, you know, even in my twenties, so then I just wasn't, and that improved greatly. So I have loved everything I've gotten from carnivore. And the whole time I work as a nutritional therapist, none of my clients were interested in being on a carnivore diet. So I developed over time a pro-healing diet. 
So it's a pro-healing approach to, to nutrition. It's not really like a diet. It's more of a blueprint for people who are specifically trying to heal their gut. We say heal the gut, help the brain, but it's specifically for mental health. That's where I was really developing my, the, um, this way of eating. And I myself wanted to eat that way. So it's an ancestral approach is very um, focused on nutrient dense foods. So very much the way I eat as a carnivore, um, but yet a little more flexible. And so really looking at supporting the mitochondria with of course, healthy fat, because that's full of electrons that the body can use, but also being able to utilize some seasonal uh, fruits and vegetables. And so I have been really, really happy with being able to slowly introduce some of those things. What I do with my clients, um, which is not um, always what I do with myself, is go very slowly. And so I have done that. And to start with the foods that feel safe to them and feel like um, they're ready to try them, not necessarily in season. And that's not a great approach. So what I've started doing with people is saying, let's, let's really look at what is seasonally ab- available, preferably locally grown, but what's seasonal in terms of the plants in your area and start there because that is a better approach. Um, so when I first started adding some things, I was really just doing what felt safe and I was doing some berries and that went okay. And then, um, but they weren't in season here. And so I just kind of switched my thinking on that specifically to help my mitochondria because there's no need, you know, healthy mitochondria drives health and dysfunctional mitochondria drives disease um, because of inflammation. So anyway, if you're really interested in like, what is a pro healing diet, you can check that video out. I have a video on the pro healing diet and I give workshops every single month for free. Um, you have to register for them so I can send you the link, but I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want people to have this information so, so that you can come check out what is a pro healing approach. But I just wanted to say that I have slowly been transitioning to more of this pro healing nutrition, which is ancestral, still eating whole foods. I'm, um, focusing on nutrient dense foods. I eat a lot of steak. I eat sardines. Um, people will see me eat sardines all the time for that DHA, um, salmon row, uh, beef liver. I still, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of liver. So I eat that. And so I'm really focused on those nutrient dense foods. And the majority of the food that I eat by volume is still coming from animal sources. That is going to be the most healing, the most bioavailable nutrients. So of course I'm going to keep doing that. The only thing that I have changed is that I've been adding in a little bit of um, in-season local produce, and I'm seeing how that goes for me. And really, what I'm so happy about is I haven't had the histamine and the, you know, the weird rash that shows up on my legs and all of that stuff. That has not happened. Knock on wood. My beaver ray things. Knock on some wood. Um, that has been going really, really well. I am also an addict in recovery. So I have to be, it's a little bit tricky with the food addiction has been the trickiest um, addiction. It's just, you know, cause you gotta eat, right? So I've just been really cautiously moving forward. And I did have a problem just to be completely transparent. I made some still animal-based. I made some dates that were wrapped in bacon and stuffed with goat cheese. Well, I really struggle with dairy. I can do butter just fine. No problems there. But when I start messing around with cheese, it's it gets just a little bit of a slippery slope. So the first batch I made, I did okay. I ate more than everyone else did, but I still didn't overeat them. And the second batch I made, I not only ate overate them, I ate them till I felt sick and then ate three more. So I'm telling you, I'm an addict. So I don't think it was the date actually, because I've had dates, um, a little bit of date, and I didn't really even like it. I think it was the fact that it was the goat cheese specifically. And I, my particular kind of addiction is a kind of the combination of the sweet with the fat. and the, mm. So that didn't work out. 
Um, but what was great about that, so if you are an addict, I, like I feel you, what was great about that is I realized because I had been feeling so great, my energy has been great, and I was adding things and doing great, and I'm like, maybe I'm not really an addict. Ha! <laughs> so one, it like smacked me in the face, which is, doesn't feel good, but it was important for me. It was an important piece of my own healing, my own recovery, like to remind me of what it feels like. And it was so clear in me. So there's no doubt. Like I know the difference in the feeling like, oh, this isn't really working for my body. I feel a little like digestive stuff, the sinus stuff. And the difference between that and this like, this is making me sick and I want more and I don't care. Kind of like this internal strangeness of addiction. So I could feel that very, very clearly, and I think that's important, and I backed myself out of it. I know how to get myself back out and to get myself the support that I need, right? And what's amazing is I can always return to carnivore, just 100% carnivore, and it just gets me back on track. It's my safe place. So I will forever be grateful and use that. And I'm also happy to report that I've been able to add some seasonal local produce without much ado. I did gain a couple of pounds, but I only weigh, um, I probably weigh a hundred pounds now. I was about 98 pounds. So that's cool for me. Um, but just, you know, again, in total transparency that when I've, since I've added some of these plants, And I'm, you know, I'm still very particular about trying to, I understand oxalates and these anti-nutrients. I never felt like I actually had a problem with the anti-nutrients or the um, defense chemicals in the plants, but I'm mindful of that. So I'm really paying attention to that. And I, you know, try to get the things that are, are lower. And, you know, I did add the non- sweet fruits first, right? Of course I did olives and avocado and I really just didn't feel very good on that. So for me, I get that that's animal based and some people do fine on fruit and adding the non-sweet fruit. And I did okay with cucumber actually, which is non-sweet fruit. Um, but I'm just playing with what actually feels good in my body. And I, you know, encourage you to do the same. And if you're interested in like, what is really a pro healing diet, Check out that video. Certainly come come to one of the free workshops. I would love to have you there. So thanks for being here. Thanks for, um, if you like these videos, please like, please subscribe to the channel because that is awesome and that really helps out. So thank you so much. Happy healing. Mm-hmm.